Hi everyone and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy, Mr. Joe on camera of course. And this week we are coming to you from the beautiful Kubota Garden in South Seattle. Designed in 1927 by master landscaper Fujitaro Kubota, these 20 acres blend Japanese garden concepts with native Northwest plants. The garden became a city park in 1987, and the incredible entrance gate was created by sculptor Gerard Sudakawa in 2004. Kubota Garden is an historic landmark, and you can easily spend a day enjoying the rich array of plants amongst the hills and valleys interlaced with streams, waterfalls, ponds, and cool bridges. We've got a fun lineup for you, including Joey Veltkamp's quilts at Greg Cusera Gallery and the debut record release from Aaron Ray and the Heartbeats. And we'll begin with the 47th Seattle International Film Festival. Now, normally this is an in-person experience, but this year it is, of course, all virtual. And I chatted with artistic director Beth Barrett about what we can look forward to seeing in this beloved locally global event. Beth Barrett, so great to Nancy see you. Nancy Guppy. <laughs> I love your great background. Great to see you too. Love your background. Oh, thank you. As, as you know, it's the Egyptian and I can't wait to be back in the Egyptian. Oh man, you and me both. Yeah. All right, so last year SIF was canceled obviously because of COVID. Um, yes. At that point, there were so many unknowns. Most of all, or one of the big ones was, how does a film festival survive when people can't physically go to the movies? So how has SIF survived and basically kind of thrived. Yeah. No, we we're doing we're doing okay. We have really been so blessed to have amazing members and donors and sponsors and supporters mm -hmm. who have helped us get to the point that we can launch the virtual SIF um, you know, Seattle International Film Festival, which is going to be amazing. <laughs> It's happening. One of the things that we realized was the part of the festival that could still thrive was those films, getting those films to audiences, but also that sense of interaction. And so we've designed a whole schedule of live Q and A's, filmmaker roundtable discussions, pre-recorded Q and A's, ways to go a little bit deeper with the films. Well, it, it is a full schedule. And so let's dive into SIP yeah. uh, number 47. How many films? 221 films in total. Oh, it's happening. It's going down. 93 features, two works in progress, and 126 short films. And from how many countries? 69 different countries of production. Wow. You know, the opening night film is The Dry. Uh, yes. Eric Bana. I, we, I've seen the trailer. It looks really cool. What made this film the right film to kick off the festival? We've had a number of films from Robert Connolly in the past, but what I love most about this film is this sort of sense of driving toward the end. You know, there's something right right past this next scene. You know, what's next? What's next? Wish I knew what it's a very neo-noir film, you know, set out in the outback out in rural Australia. And it's beautifully shot and it's just, a, it's a fantastic film. When you've been lying about something for so long, it becomes second nature. And it's something quite peculiar. No! Under the Milky Way tonight. Um, now, SIF uh, special events are always a big draw. I yes. um, was we, we were talking earlier, a lot of the big names that have come through, Spike Lee, Angelica Huston, you, Ewan McGregor, to name just a few. Mm -hmm. um, just a few. Just a few. What kind of special events are planned for this year's festival? So we are really honored to be doing our tribute to the wonderful Tom Skerritt. He's been in the industry as one of the greatest character actors of our time. And this year, he stars in East of the Mountains uh, from local filmmaker S.J. Chiro. And he's in every scene and it's such a meaty, meaty role that we were like, this is perfect. I have cancer. Hi dad, it's Renee. I'm just not feeling that great about this trip that you wanna take all alone. It's a great time to honor Tom for not just all of the work he has done, but all of the work he continues to do. In his 80s, he's still a leading man. Tell us 
about the new streaming SIF channel in, in kind of layman's yeah. terms. It really is kind of like a Netflix channel. In fact, you can get channels on your Roku, Android TV, Apple TV, or Fire Stick. That is just, it's the SIF channel. And you go to it just like you would go to Netflix or Hulu, find the film you want to see, and boom, there it is. There it is. It's an exciting future opportunity for us. One of the things that we've realized within <clears throat> within this whole, you know, pandemic closure and and um, and everybody being in their houses is that accessibility is possible. You can still access these amazing international and independent films, and they still can have a platform. You know, it supports the filmmakers, supports the films, and it supports the audiences finding those discoveries. Right, right. All right, Miss Barrett. Now to the moment yes. we've all been waiting for, <laughs> Beth Barrett's top three film picks of SIF 2021. I've chosen three films from three very different, um, very different genres. Uh, the first, East of the Mountains, is a beautiful love letter to the Northwest, and you can feel it in every frame. I'm really excited for, for people to be able to see that. Um, a film that I, I have loved for a couple of years and I, I find extremely funny, um, as you know, my Scandinavian sense of humor, um, it's Pamela Tola's Ladies of Steel, in which a, an older woman accidentally whacks her husband on the head with a frying pan and kills him, and then goes on a road trip with her older sisters, her two older sisters, on a self-discovery road trip of, you know, well, what is my life going to be now? It's very funny in that sort of, you know, I say that grumpy old Scandinavian person genre, uh, which I'm very fond of. And then a film that I saw in, at the Toronto Film Festival in September and has stayed with me mostly because of Yakusha Koji's acting um, is Under the Open Sky from Miwa Nishikawa. Um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous film about a man who, a former uh, Yakuza who gets out of jail and just wants to live a very calm life and be present in his life for the first time. And obviously forces around him might not be as, be as happy about that. It's a beautifully acted film and very meditative um, and, and one of my favorites of the festival. Those are three outstanding picks amongst many. Um, when you watch films at home, what is your yeah. watching movies at home setup? What does it look like? So oftentimes it looks like me on the couch with a cup of Bengal spice tea, tiger tea. Um, and of course with a cat on me because the cats, the minute you're on a couch with a blanket, cats are like, well, <laughs> this is where I sit now. Right. <laughs> well, uh, so great to see you, Beth. Congrats. It's always great to see you. Congratulations on number 47. Have a great festival. And next year, fingers crossed, I hope that we are having this conversation in person on the red carpet at McCaw Hall. That is my plan. Yep. But, you know, <laughs> best laid plans. <laughs> we go with it. We go with it. And that's just it. The arts, they roll with it. You know, props to all the arts organizations that are reinventing themselves, figuring out how to get new audiences. Um, and, a, and a reminder that, you know, if you love an art organization, support it during the hard times or else that art organization may not be there for the good times. Ab absolutely. That's come, just come blazingly clear in the last year. Yes. All yes. Right, yes, it has, sadly. Lovely Much to love. talk to you. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye. The 47th Seattle International Film Festival runs April 8th through 18th. For the full lineup of films, special events, and ticket and pass information, go to SIF.net. Aaron Ray and the Heartbeats is a great local band whose debut record release was postponed by COVID. The good news is that the record is slated to drop on April 21st, which is also Aaron Ray's birthday. Well, here's the band performing the title track off the new record, and this video was shot in 2020 at Columbia City Theater's Bourbon Bar. One, two, one, two, three. Lately, I've been feeling low down. Lately, I can't keep my feet on the ground yet. Lately, I feel I'm running out of time. And lately, I just.
just can't get no sleep. Lately, self-doubt is cutting deep. Yeah, lately, I don't want to leave this behind. And every single day feels like a goddamn fight. And living in the moment just doesn't feel right. So I'll reach out and hold on tight. Lately, I've been feeling all alone. Lately, I don't want to do this on my own. Lately, from Aaron Ray and the Heartbeats, drops Wednesday, April 21st with a live streaming event that you can enhance with a custom cocktail delivered to your doorstep. All the fun details, including how to pre-order the CD, are at AaronRayandTheHeartbeats.com. Hey, we are in Pioneer Square at Greg Kucera Gallery, one of my favorite galleries in Seattle. There's a wonderful show here right now. It's called Lumberton, Washington, featuring the quilts of Joey Veltkamp. Come on. So there's lots to see. We're going to start with this one here, and it's called Gay Horse Hey. And a lot of humor in this piece. Uh, what I want to point out is the materials uh, that Joey is using. It's, it's a work clothes. Uh, there's dockers. You can see the little tag right there. Um, I believe this is the Carhartt uh, material, or car, maybe this is the Carhartt. And of course, we have Dickies uh, down here as well. So there's, um, uh, like I said, lots of meaning in this piece uh, for Joey. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. Also, by the way, you can notice these hanging little um, threads. Joey is known for doing that. Uh, a lot of quilters don't do that with their quilts, but he likes to do that, and it gives a whole beautiful texture. And you're going to see that on a lot of them. OK, so this piece here is called Lunch at Ivers. It cr cracks me up because I know exactly what this is about. Those are seagulls. If you've ever been on the waterfront at Ivers uh, Fish and Ship Joint, 
um, and you're eat, sitting outside eating, um, you are going to be visited by a lot of seagulls looking for a little bite. And that's what these are all doing. So it's both really beautiful, but also kind of creepy and hilarious at the same time. Now this one here is called Blue Angels. And Joey has said he's not really into the Blue Angels, but he knows a lot of people that are. Obviously a lot of flags as well. There's quite a few flag uh, representations in the quilt in this show. Um, and part of the reason is that Joey and his um, husband Ben live in Bremerton, which is a military base, military place. And so flags have um, a lot of prominence and there's a lot of meaning in flags, of course, both positive and negative. Uh, but I think he really uses them, uses them really beautifully. Um, okay, on this side, and I've, I first have to point out this one here. It's called Life is Beautiful. That's the name of the quilt. We're all gonna die. Enough said, right? I think it's a beautiful piece, and it also, I have to say, makes me laugh. And then this piece here is, is quite lovely. Uh, Let's Rock is what it's called, and it's all these different owls. The um, owl way up there is made out of wood, <laughs> which uh, makes me laugh. Uh, of course, over here, the, the rainbow, gay pride. Also, I think Jerry, Joey has said that, um, you know, that also is a Christian symbol in a lot of ways, rainbows. So there's all sorts of really wonderful fabrics here. Again, look at this. There we got the old American flag. This is probably one of my favorite pieces. Uh, it's sold, of course, and it's called Thelma and Verns, and this TV Manette radio, this is an actual sign in Bremerton as you walk over the bridge into Manette, which is a little um, area of Bremerton, a little town, I guess, and I find this to just be charming because it's so old-fashioned, the fact that there's this old TV sign. And I just think the beautiful, um, the clouds, and it's just very, uh, it, it's just nostalgic. It's very homey, uh, a, a really, really good feeling. All right, now there are a few pieces that um, I want Joey to talk about because they're great stories. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call him on FaceTime and he's gonna uh, talk to us directly. So, hey, there he is, the artist, Joey Veltkamp. Hello. <laughs> it's so great to be able to see you virtually. Okay, this one, car alarms on ferry. A lot of humor here, so tell our audience about this piece. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, uh, this is uh, one of my favorite pieces from the show. If you ride the ferry often enough, you, you, you learn quickly all the kind of funny customs and rituals that only happen on the ferry. And one of the charming things that happens is invariably a car alarm is going to go off and the captain's going to come on, make an announcement saying, whosoever car this is, get down here, fix it, because it's going to keep going off. So I started a list of them, and I think I'm up to about 75. The captain will say, like, will the owner of the black BMW or the exactly. white Mercedes, right? Yes, and this is the first 10 in order that I experienced. It's great, and I love the blingy vibe of the material that you've chosen to make this quilt with. It's a little shiny, and it's a little yeah, like, absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of high end. Yes, exactly, yeah. elevated. And the final quilt we're gonna end our little tour on, it's kind of the, it, it's really a highlight. It's called Little Versailles. It's literally our backyard, right? 2020, um, I, I mean, I, I can't complain about 2020. Folks have lost so much, I feel incredibly blessed. But um, this was the highlight of my year. Ben's sister moved in with us uh, for a little while. And one of the things she did during summer was get us one of these above ground pools. And um, I just spent, uh, you know, at the end of the work day, we'd all get to go out there, jump in the pool, have a beer, like maybe two people could fit at a time. But it was, oh, I mean, the, the best. It was the best days of, or best moments of my whole year. And you actually, yeah. and I, if I'm not mistaken, you float around on a unicorn floaty. I, I, exactly. That's the unicorn floaty I float right around there. on. Uh, yeah. Well, Joey, it's just, uh, it's such a great show. There's so much heart um, and humor and pathos as well. Uh, it's beautiful. So um, thanks for letting us tour around and bringing you in. And you, of course, can check out Lumberton now through April 17th at Greg Cusera Gallery. And more information is on their website. And that's a wrap from Kubota Garden. If you'd like to know more about this gorgeous place, including how to get here, go to kubotagarden.org. Well, thanks for tuning in. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon. Cue the lawnmower and the plane. And the kids.
and the adults and the birds, which we love. The birds are good. This is a public place. We can't demand constant silence. But it's like, hey, we're doing TV, don't you understand? And, and people are like, yeah, we don't care. We own this place. It's the public park. It's not the TV person park. In fact, we want you to be quiet. Hey, girl. Hey, old lady. Zip it. Zip it. I think Fair we enough. Have our credit roll. I think we do too. <laughs>